Hi, this is Bob Hope in the golden days of radio. Hi, this is Frank Brzee inviting you to join me for the golden days of radio. Great moments from radio programs of the past with the world's most famous personalities. On this program, we are continuing with our salute to Bob Hope as we present the radio adaptation of his motion picture, Sorrowful Jones. The Hollywood Radio Theater. The Hollywood Radio Theater. Adaptations of famous motion pictures with Hollywood's greatest stars. Here is your host, Frank Brzee. Greetings again, ladies and gentlemen. From Paris to Pago Pago, there's hardly a man, woman, or child now alive who hasn't seen or heard Bob Hope. And for millions of XGIs, Bob will always be remembered as the man who brought a touch of comedy to Korea and a touch of excitement to Europe. Bob traveled the world and entertained more than any other comedian. When in Hollywood, he would stop off just long enough to do a radio show, and this time a radio version of his Paramount picture, Sorrowful Jones. And co-starring with him is the lovely and talented actress who made the picture such a success, Lucille Ball. Bob proved that people all over the world always appreciate top entertainment. And now, Act One of Sorrowful Jones, starring Bob Hope in the title role as Sorrowful, Lucille Ball as Gladys, and little Mary Jane Saunders as Martha. <laughs> is a love story, the story of Sorrowful Jones, who fell in love with money at the age of six. They've been going steady ever since. In Midtown, New York, just off Broadway, there's a barber shop. Oh no, our hero is not a barber. He does his clipping in the back of the barber shop. It's called a horse room, and if the police knew about it, they'd close it up because betting on horses, except at the racetrack, is against the law. All right, come on, bring it, Joe. All right, you guys, get in line, in line. Snap out of it, boss, Dreamy Joe won. We gotta pay off these. Things. I feel awful, Dreamy Joe. What right has a horse like that got to win a race? He's so old, they have to mix his oats with adrenaline. Come on, Sorrowful, my dough, my dough. This kind of money will never bring you any happiness. Me either. Shell out. Well, let go of it, you choking Lincoln. I was just waving goodbye, and my hand got caught in his beard. <laughs> Hey, wouldn't you like to bet it all in the next race, huh? Wouldn't you? Gimme it, gimme it. Oh, that good old dreamy Joe. Hey, Sheriff. Don't bother him, Sam. He's giving his blood away. I'll bother him. Big Steve wants you should come over to his cafe right away. Big Steve, huh? Yes. Hey, doesn't Big Steve own Dreamy Joe? What'd he do, tip everybody in the street except me? He knew Dreamy Joe was gonna win. It was a boat race, a big frame. They ought to bar guys like that from racing. I don't come running just because a guy like Big Steve wants to see me. What'd you say? That a guy like Big Steve can't make me come running. Look, punk. Let's take an old-fashioned walk. <laughs> well, the nose that walks like a man. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Guess I wasn't watching. Gladys. Hello, Sorrowful. I recognized the suit as soon as you turned the corner. <laughs> I got it to train to turn it with, turn with me or something. <laughs> say, don't knock this suit. Some people seem to forget what some people used to spend on some people. Ben, where did you ever learn that word? Yeah, well, I'd like to have a nickel for every bottle of champagne I bought you. <laughs> I was more naive then. I believed that you could make champagne by mixing ginger ale and rubbing alcohol. <laughs> anyway, I... Oh, look, Sorrowful, what beautiful violets. And only 25 cents a bun. Come on, Gladys, they've got dangerous thorns. <laughs> yeah, same old Sorrowful. Oh, you got me all wrong. I'm a big man now. Since we folded in the gaieties, I've been going places in show business. I hear it's win place in show business. So I'm hustling, Beth. It's a living, practically honest. Well, I have to make a living, too, and this is it. You mean here in Big Steve's Cafe? Well. Hey, this is a nice picture of you here on the poster. Thank you. Beautiful job of retouching. Oh. Who are you supposed to be, Ichabod or Mr. Toad? <laughs> I've been singing here three months, Sorrowful. Why haven't you dropped by? Well, I understood you were going with Big Steve. Well, he doesn't like me to have other boyfriends. 
But I could tell him you were my aunt, couldn't I? Well, so long, Sorkin. Oh, no, I'm going in, too. Hey, Big Steve can get awful nasty. You don't think I'm afraid of him, do you? Not me, kid. I can handle my fists. Yes, I remember. While you are handling your fists, somebody else was handling your head. Well, you've never heard my courage questioned. I've never even heard it mentioned. Yeah. Well, I gotta rehearse. Oh, uh, there is his office, Sorrowful. Well, you think I'm kidding, don't you? Just watch me. Is Big Steve in there? Get in here. Oh, hi, you fellas. Oh, hi, fellas. Well, I, I didn't expect a crowd. I see every bookmaker in town is here. Hey, what do you think you're doing, Steve? You can't push us around. I'm gonna... Shut your mouth. Oh, you can't push us around. I'll tell you that. Now that <laughs> uh, we're all here, Steve, what's on your mind? Okay. You guys all know I own a horse named Dreamy Joe. I knew he was gonna win today. <laughs> Guess you bookies lost your shirts, huh? Just look at me. I had to starch my stomach and tie my hair on my chest into a Windsor knot. <laughs> well, next time Dreamy Joe is out, he's gonna lose. And I want a thousand bucks a piece from you guys just for making them lose. A thousand bucks, huh? And how do we know that as soon as you get our dough, you won't turn right around and... And what? Yeah, and what, Starful? Well, you, you, you turn around and around and... A fella could get dizzy that way. <laughs> All right, Doc, explain things. Well, it's like this, gentlemen. A dreamy Joe only wins when I give him one of these pills. It's a speedball. One more speedball, well, Dreamy Joe will win the race, but an hour later, he'll be dead. Yeah, we could give him the speedball now, but I'm waiting until I got a big bankroll to bet on him. So for now, I'll just take a grand from each of you. And the next time out, Dreamy Joe loses. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay, Sorrowful, hand over the fear. Oh, I don't handle that kind of money, Sam. I don't even know what it looks like. Whose picture's on the $1,000 bill, Washington, Jefferson, or Jolson? <laughs> I hear different. I hear tell you are a very thrifty character. Oh, now, I'm just a little careful. I may have some small change with me. Let's see what I've got in my pockets. There's my skate key, my Sky King X-ray ring, and uranium finder. <laughs> and a lock of hair from Jane Russell's Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> well, what do you know? No money. I suppose we'll have to get it the hard way, huh? No, no, I, I only... Hey, hey, what are you doing to me? Just going into the vault. Yeah, but that's my shirt. You'll tear my shirt. There it is, boy. A money belt tied around his tummy. Boy, is he loaded. Well, I might have a little here, fellas. It's my mad money. Here you are, Steve. Here's a G. Now get out of here. And don't let it happen again. Next time, I'll lose my temper. Oh, leaving so soon, Sorrowful? Oh, I got a big deal cooking, Gladys, but I'll be around. Well, just be sure to come before 6 o'clock. That's when the prices change. Pick it up, Joe. The stars look down, they seem to say. Maybe love You're off key, is like on always. its way. I'm having a wonderful wish. Five on Dreamy Joe. Two bucks on Dreamy Joe. Ten bucks. Hey, Sorrowful. Gosh, boss, am I glad to see you. Everybody in town's betting on Dreamy Joe. If that nag wins again, you're cleaned out. Oh, boy, look at this money piling up. I may have to open a branch mattress. All right, who's next? Come on, boys, put something in the pot. $20 on Dreamy Joe to win. Okay, mister, but where's the 20 bucks? Well, I, I was hoping you'd take my marker. Look, brother, we don't take IOUs from three kinds of people, men, women, and children. Uh, but I, I just don't have it at the moment. Pick up your marker, chum. Have it dyed green and come back. Some nerve. Hey, little girl, what are you doing here? Hello. Hey, somebody heist the kid up on the counter so she can make her bet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she, she's my little girl. Yeah, well, ek te ide idke om hey. But I don't want to go home. <laughs> hey, you're pretty smart. I'm four years old, and I can count to ten. Yeah? That's big talk. Let's see you back it up. All right, I'll count your money. Now, give me that. Give me that. <laughs> She's over four. Out, out. Take the kid home. Let's go, Daddy. I remember him in that book you read. He's a monster. <laughs> monster? There's a little bit of Crosby in you, kid. <laughs> Now, watch yourself. I run this joint. I got plenty of friends on my side. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, okay then. Here. Here's a penny. But even licorice costs two pennies. What are they making it out of now? Coffee? <laughs> Martha Jane. That's all right. The kid's right. Here. Here's two cents. Go stuff yourself. Oh, thank you very much. Mr. Jones, I've got a friend down the street. I know he'll let me have the 20. Yeah, well, hurry down. Well, if you could let me place my bet now, I'd, I'd leave Martha Jane here till I get back. Dreamy Joe's my only chance to get even. Oh, you want to bet on Dreamy Joe, huh? Well, take his marker, Regret. Well, be a good girl, Martha Jane. 
I'll be right back. What happened, boss? I didn't see him pull no gun on you. Don't you understand? Dreamy Joe, he can't possibly win. It's a frame-up, a fix. A boat race? And Dreamy Joe is on the slowest boat, as jockey as Grandma Moses. Not only that, they're going to slip the horse a pill. How's that going to make him lose? It's a four-way cold tablet. You won't know which way to run. <laughs> okay, fellas, step right up and place your bets. That Dreamy Joe looks awfully good. Don't crowd me, fellas. What is it Right, Steve. I find this guy right outside the office door. He listened to what you say. Steve, please. I, I, I didn't mean to listen. I came here hoping you'd loan me $20. What did you hear? Honest, Steve, I don't... He says, what did you hear? You know what I heard. Talking about the race, weren't you? You fixed it so Dreamy Joe can't win. And what are you going to do about it? I've ruined my life on horses. I'm washed up, broke. But there's one thing I can still do. I'm getting out of here and I'm going to the police. You're going where? Seems to me he mentions the law. If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to see the guys like you are... Oh. We better get rid of him, boys, for good. Yeah. I'll get the car meet you around back. They're passing across the line of finish now with Green Demon winning it by two lengths. Fearless Champ is second. Bingo is third. And Dreamy Joe is fourth. Oh. Well, that's it, boys. Too bad, eh? Okay, sir, for you can take your fingers out of your ears. Huh? You was right. Dreamy Joe lost. Oh, how about that? Last thing I heard, he was out in front. What was that crook jockey trying to do, win? Oh, I got to get out of this racket, regret. This is too much of a strain. I wonder if it's too late to get in the television. You've had a big day, boss. Forty-two hundred dollars. Forty-two hundred. Boy, I feel better already. Maybe if we could plant a little of this, we could grow a money tree, huh? Hey. What's this? That's the tab we took for that guy's 20. Well, didn't he come back? No. When he does, get the 20 before he takes back his kid. The kid? Well, where is she? Well, she was sitting right over... How do you like that? Gone. Every time I get big-hearted. When was the other time? <laughs> oh, forget it, boss. Let's go with a big Steve and celebrate. We got nothing to celebrate. Besides, I wouldn't pay a cover charge to hear Gladys sing. She sounds like Jessica with her net dragon. <laughs> I'm going out and look around for that doll. Okay, I'll close up here. Huh? My daddy gets back. Hey, where are you? Right here, under the counter. How do you like that? I guess I must have fallen asleep. Oh, I hate to turn a sweet little doll like you over to Sarville, but i got three miles to feed. Two on my wife. But what will I do? Uh, Sarville will find you, Pop. There ain't nobody Sarville who can't find that owes him 20 bucks. But I'm hungry. Tell you what I'll kill do, kiddo. I'll take you over there to Big Steve's Cafe and put on the feed bag. Come on. We'll know what to do after we get some nourishment. Good evening, Sarville. Oh, for a guy that wasn't coming here, you're awful present. Well, my Boy Scout troop is holding a meeting here tonight. The Vic Damone Beaver Patrol. <laughs> so you found the doll, I regret. What about my 20 bucks? Have you got it, or can I tie my shoelace? Well, uh, what about her you-know-what? Her you-know-what is taking a powder. We hold her till he comes across. I'm awfully hungry. Hungry? What about that two cents worth of licorice? You want to get jowls? <laughs> you want to look like a four-year-old Kate Smith? Or a five-year-old Ted Collins? <laughs> Sit down, honey Well, I didn't expect to see you back here so soon Oh, hello, Gladys Say, I heard you You've been taking singing lessons, huh? That's right Now, if you can get your singing teacher to take some lessons, you're all set <laughs> Are you babysitting to earn some spending money? Oh, you mean this little doll here? Her father left her in the horse room for a $20 marker The horse lost and her old man ain't showed I want my daddy What's your name, dear? Martha Jean Smith well, do you know where you live? I live in a big, tall house with lots and lots of windows and doors. <laughs> you better call the police, Sorrowful. They'll know what to do. Not on your life. Why, they'd fingerprint her. She'd have a record overnight. <laughs> Besides, Sorrowful loves Martha Jane very much. Twenty bucks worth. I'm hungry. Haven't you ordered her anything to eat? Eat? You want to ruin this kid's figure? Sorrowful doesn't like me. Oh, of course he likes you, Martha. And he's going to buy you a big dinner. Big dinner, yes. 
If he doesn't, I'm going to call the cops myself, and then Uncle Sorrowful will be out 20 big, crisp dollar bills. Okay. Waiter, yeah. bring this little lady to works a bowl of cornflakes, two spoons. <laughs> hey, I got a little kid like that at home. I feed her steak for supper. After the tip you're going to get, she'll be back on cornflakes. I like steak for supper. Kids have been around. Why don't you order filet mignon? Oh, thank you. And a smash please. Mm, and a baked potato and some spinach. And a nice big glass of milk and some strawberry shortcake. That's what I give my kid for supper. Now, what can I do for you? Adopt me. <laughs> hey, look, boys. Martha Jane, she's falling asleep right here at the table. Which reminds me, where does she spend the night? You better take her to your place and put her to bed. I'm no nursemaid. Besides, my room is too small. I have to sleep with one leg out in the hall. <laughs> Why couldn't one of you? I'd like to, Sorrowful, but I don't finish until 1 o'clock, and this poor kid's got to get to bed now. Look, we only got one bed at my house, and my wife even objects to me sharing it. Well, let's wake the kid up. We'll slip her some strong coffee. Maybe she'll think of something cheap. Oh, Sorrowful, for once in your life, why don't you do something nice for somebody? Okay, okay, I'm the fall guy. I can see it all coming. The minute I make a few bucks, everybody wants to move in. Say, waiter, will you wrap up the rest of that steak for my dog? I'll get a bag. You haven't got a dog. Quiet. Come on, Shorts. Wake up, Shorts. This is it. We travel. Didn't my daddy come yet? No, but if he doesn't come by morning, I'm going to put an ad in the scratch sheet. Sorrowful will be very nice to you, honey. He'll take care of you until your daddy comes. I guess you're really not a monster, Mr. Sorrowful. You just look like one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just look like one. <laughs> Come on, blow. Mr. Sorrowful, will you help me with these buttons, please? You mean I gotta undress you, too? What kind of buttons are these? You sure you haven't got this thing on backwards, or were you in the Navy? <laughs> Honey, you mustn't laugh on this show. You'll start a trend. <laughs> steady now, steady. Now, where's the bathroom, please? The powder room is over there. Thank you. Just get going, Shorts, and I'll fix your bed. Ah, she can sleep on the sofa. I'll just put this sheet over it, toss on a blanket, and give her this pillow. Now, this is the soft one. I'll give her the other pillow. The one that's stuffed with Lux wrappers. <laughs> okay, Shorts, come on, hit the sack. Your bed's already. I'm coming. Good night. Good night. Watch the snoring, see? I'm a very... Hey, hey, that's my bed. I know it is, and it's very nice of you to let me sleep in it. Yeah. <laughs> but the sofa, I just made up the... Okay. Okay, Princess. You sure you're comfortable? Oh, yes. It's nice and soft. Yes. Well, can I get you anything? A salami sandwich or... Slug a pablum? <laughs> Mr. Sorrowful, I want my daddy. You want your daddy. That makes two of us. My daddy used to sing to me when I couldn't sleep. Oh, that's nice. Please couldn't sing. Then I wouldn't feel so lonesome and scared. If I start singing in here, we'll both be lonesome. <laughs> okay, you gotta have singing to go to sleep. How's this? Mule train! <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, that's just good for putting mules to sleep. <laughs> Let me see. Got to have singing. Sweet Adeline, my... A no, need two other guys and Phil Harris for that. <laughs> Look, I just happen to have the racing form here. I'll read your story, huh? Please sing. Okay. rock a bye baby at Pimlico. Here's a smart horse, I'll bet him do show. This one's a sleeper, hope you're the same. Here's a good jockey, Sandman's his name. Lie in your paddock, count winning sheep. Put 25 fish on little bones. What a corny character. <laughs> but I guess he means well. <laughs> Jump 
just a few moments. We'll be back with Act Two of Sorrowful Jones. <laughs> No power over me, no power over me I'm sick of smoke, I'm sick of smoke from cigarettes And sick of those with nothing else to do Cause I know what is what And what is not no, no, no. The thing to do My friends and I get in our list Got no intention to get sick on lousy cigarettes Now, here again is your host. The curtain rises on the second act of Sorrowful Jones, starring Bob Hope and Lucille Ball. Well, it's early the following morning, and a visitor has just arrived at Sorrowful Jones' apartment. Is that my daddy? It's me, honey, Gladys. Well, some place you've got, Sorrowful. Just the thing for a kid. What time do the bats fly out? I don't keep track of them as long as they pay their rent. What brings you here? I've got some oatmeal here for her breakfast. What do you think I was going to give her, pickled octopus? I got coffee in the stove right now. Yeah, and donuts. That's what I thought. Mr. Sorrowful, the wife's getting out because... Okay. I've been giving her a bath. The things you got to do for 20 bucks. Well, I'll finish your bath, and then I'll make her some breakfast. Boy, it's a good thing I showed up. She'd have the first case of Berry Berry on Broadway. Berry Berry. Does she have to have two of everything? <laughs> How you doing, honey? Oh, I'm doing fine. Now, where's that washcloth? Just look at the high gloss I got on her shoulders. Well, this is a nice homey picture. Steve. Big Steve. Always lock your door, sorrowful. That's rule number one. Come here, I want to talk to you. Oh, I, I can explain everything, Steve. I guess you're thinking the minute you turn your back, Gladys runs into some handsome guy's apartment. That occurs to you again, just take a good look in the mirror. <laughs> no cracks about my face. Cary Grant is so jealous of me, he's having another hole drilled in his chin. <laughs> I, uh, I came by here to make you a business proposition. Oh, well, after what I won on Dreamy Joe yesterday, it's like you were singing in my ear. I need 5,000 bucks now. Song's over. I said I need dough. Now write out a check. I'm going to run Dreamy Joe again, only this time he wins. He's getting that last speedball. Yeah, but $5,000? You heard me. Okay, okay. 5000 I don't know if there's enough blood in my fountain pen. The check, the check. You forgot to sign it. I don't have to. The bank will recognize the teardrops. <laughs> By the way, the racing commission just took away my license. Oh, well, that's different. No license, no race. Well, I'll tear up the check. That's... Now, look, you just have to find a new owner, that's all. And my friend Doc Adams slips in the speed ball and Dreamy Joe wins. Well, you'll have so much money, you'll have to crawl over it to get to bed. Yeah, gee, money. Now I'll be able to get what I've always wanted, more money. <laughs> Go ahead, Sorrowful, give me the check. Check? Say, if it's that good, you can have the cash. Now turn around while I get it out of my sock. Holy cow, what a bankroll. Stop peeking. Okay, here, five Gs. Thanks. Now, look, about a new owner. Mr. I... Sorrowful, I'm all dry now. Well, get wet again. I'm busy. <laughs> hey, hey, what about her? Gladys? No, no, the kid in there. She has kind of an honest face. Hey, not bad. Shorts couldn't double cross us, could she? Who is she? Oh, one of the neighbor's kids. I rent her my tub. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, Martha Jane Smith. All right, tell her she's got a horse running in the feature race on Thursday. And tell her not to go shooting her mouth off to the other kids. Don't worry, I'll put glue in her bubble gum. <laughs> hey, Gladys, have a little breakfast. Well, I better stay here, Steve. Just to see that Sorrowful doesn't give the kid an after-breakfast cigar. Okay, but don't let this kid to be a habit with you. Can I come in? How are you, regrets? Okay, I'm just leaving. Well, what's everybody doing up in the daytime? Hello, Mr. Mr. Regret. Oh, hello, honey. Uh, get rid of the kid, boy. What? Get rid of the kid. Okay. Hey, Shorts, I think Gladys better take you inside and finish dressing you. Come on, honey. Can I have some bacon for breakfast? Bacon? I just bought you a horse. Oh, my very young. What color? 
plaid. Who cares what color? Does the mile in 137 with blinkers. Now get in that room. Say, what is all this? I don't know nothing about a plaid horse, Gladys. All I know is what's in the morning paper. Well? Martha Jane's old man. They found him in the East River. Oh, no. Yeah, here it is, Orville Smith. And in his pocket, a certain bookmaker's ticket for 20 clams on Dreamy Joe. He got knocked off. Somebody bumped him. Oh, that poor little kid. Gee, we better turn her over to the police. They'll know where to find her mother. Miss Gladys, will you help me with these buttons, please? Sure, honey. Well, I guess you'd like to go home now and see your mommy, huh? But I can't do that. Why not? My daddy says she's never coming back. I only can't even remember what she looks like. Miss Gladys, can I go and see my new horse? Sure, honey. Sure, you can see your new horse. You mean mine, Jimmy Joe's really my horse? That's right, Martha Jane. It's a present for Mr. Sorrowful. You're sitting pretty, honey. Your horse and all of them nice new clothes Gladys bought you. She's a big spender, that Gladys, with my money. Come on, George. Let's take Dreamy Joe for a walk. Hey, uh, how much of this deal does Gladys know? Well, she knows a very good percentage. I have to tell her that I need the kid now so we could raise Dreamy Joe next Thursday. And the speedball, the uh, F-I-X? Stop showing off. Anyway, <laughs> Gladys wouldn't understand. She's one of those high-minded dames, thinks gambling as a sport. Well, as long as the kid stays with you till after the race, you're in good shape. Oh, I'm in great shape. I'm holding a hot kid the cops would love to find. A gent was murdered with my marker in his pocket. I'm mixed up in a crooked race, and if I try to resign, Big Steve and once over Sam will beat me to death with their pinkies. Oh, I'm in fine shape. Excuse me if I disappear, boss. There's a detective named Reardon approaching. Reardon? Talk to Reardon, will you? I'll hide Martha Jane. Hello, Gladys. Hi. <coughs> Who's minding City Hall? Hey, it's in good hands. Say, what was Sorrowful's big hurry? I wanted to talk to him. I hear he's latched onto a little girl. <laughs> it's me, and I'm a big girl. I'm talking about the little Smith girl. Oh, you know about her. Registering a horse in the kid's name is a funny way of trying to hide her. Look, Mr. Reardon, if you could just sort of not see her around for a couple of days, just until Dreamy Joe runs, she might win $3,500. I didn't say I was going to put the cuffs on her. You mean there's a heart under that badge? I hear it ticking once in a while. <laughs> well, I better try to find Sarah. Is that you, Gladys? I'm here in the stable. Is he gone? No, not yet. Oh, oh, Reardon. Oh, oh, hiya. Well, what are you doing here? Some horse steal a blanket? Where's the little girl? Little girl? What little girl? Huh? Care for a bucket of oats, lump of sugar, give you a rub down, braid your tail? <laughs> the Smith girl. Smith girl? Never met her, but I bought some cough drops from her brothers. <laughs> little girl, huh? How tall? Like so. Not my type. You better ask Mickey Rooney. I'm just uh, around here with <laughs> horses and stuff. Now, look, I'm talking about the kids you're trying to hide. You know what they do to you for kidnapping? They sit you in a big chair, strap your legs in, and they strap your arms in. On your head, they put a steel cap, and then they turn on the electricity. Does it hurt you? Hurt you? <laughs> it ruins you. Why, it even... Hey, Gladys, you better get some water. Laughing boy just fainted. <laughs> Here we are, Shorts. This is it. I had a wonderful time with your party, Miss Gladys. Thank you, dear. Her party? Who bought the paper cups? He's funny, isn't he? <laughs> Go on. Get ready for bed. Good night, honey. See you when you come in and kiss me. Good night, sorrowful. What did she say? Oh, it's a new thing, kissing her. Good night. She's been seeing those pictures in the paper of Alban and his bride. <laughs> You know, under that hide of yours, you're practically a person. Yeah, well, you better head for the cafe. It's about time for you to do your number. The one you sing off key. The good one. Oh, I have time yet. Sorrowful, what happens to Martha when the race is over? Well, if I can stay clear of Reardon that long, she'll get the air. What else? Uh-huh. Okay if I have a drink? Go ahead. You know the combination. <laughs> well, I can see the bottle, but where are your two straws? <laughs> Don't bother. All I want is a little taste. So after the race, you just disappear, huh? Well, maybe she'll latch on to somebody. Some nice couple with a front lawn. Have you been taking sentimental pills? 
I haven't heard you talk about front lawns since that night in Omaha. Yeah, I'll never forget that night. We had dinner in that wonderful chop suey joint. Mm. <laughs> Boy, was that expensive. <laughs> and then, after we tossed for the check and I lost, you got kind of romantic. Well, I didn't want you to embarrass me by leaving too small a tip. You know, Gladys, Martha Jane's crazy about you. I'm crazy about her, too. If she had you and a father, she'd have a complete set. Sure she would. Well, what about you and, uh, and... Yes? You and Big Steve. It's later than I thought. So long. But your drink... Pour it back in the bottle and dive in after it. Well, what are you sore about? Who's sore? I just think I better get to work. Big Steve might not like it. So long, Tyrone. Dames, go figure them. They act like a bunch of women. <laughs> hey, you. Short. How you doing? I'm all ready. Aren't you going to read me a story? This book, the one Aunt Gladys gave me. Aunt Gladys. Now it's Aunt Gladys. It's good you got rich relatives. Mr. Sargo, why are you such a tight one? <laughs> Now, uh, wait a minute. Talking like that ain't nice. There's no telling who might be listening. You mean God? Yeah, maybe. Mr. Sarvel, have you ever seen God? Well, no, he doesn't hang around horse rooms very much. <laughs> but if you ever want anything, why, you just ask God, and often as not, he comes through. You mean write letters, like Santa Claus? Well, that's where praying comes in. You save three cents. Mr. Sarvel, teach me how to pray. I want to ask for something. I never knew a dame who didn't. Okay. Only don't go telling people about this. I don't want it to get around, you see? Now, kneel. But why should I kneel? How do I know? I don't make the rules. No, who does? Well, like a racing commission makes the rules of the track, I guess there must be a praying commission someplace. Now what do I do? Well, just say like this. Now I lay me down to sleep. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake. If I should die before I wake. I pray the Lord my soul to take. I pray the Lord my soul to take. And God bless sorrowful, gladdest, regret, and everybody. God bless sorrowful, gladdest, regret, and everybody. And Jimmy go too? Oh, yeah, him most of all. He's the closest to going. And, <laughs> and Jimmy Joe most of all. He's the closest of going. Is that all? That's it. That's the works. Well, when do I ask for what I want? Oh, you better slip it in right now, quick, while your prayer is still hot. <laughs> Please, dear God, buy Mr. Sarfo a new suit of clothes. With two pair of pants, please. <laughs> With two pair of pants. Good night, Sarfo. Good night, Shorts. Shut Sorrowful up and get that kid out of sight. Having her around so close may give Reardon ideas. But what must I do with her? I don't care what you do. Just get rid of her. Okay, Steve. I'm on my way. Ta-da! No, I don't believe it. A new suit. <laughs> Just look at him. Hi, Starfo. You're almost as beautiful as Jimmy Joe. Well, you like it? It's like Rembrandt painted a dish of chicken fat. <laughs> Drink it in. I gotta be back in the window by 12. The material is reversible. The jacket opens up into a record player. And new shoes, but I only paid for a new suit. Stool pigeon. Can't a citizen get dressed up if he wants to? I come for the kid. She's going on a trip. A trip? Is he going to take me to my daddy? Get in your room, Shorts. I'll give you the rundown later. All right, Sam. Who's going on what trip? According to Steve, the kid's got to get lured. Such as out of town or in the orphan home. But she's not in anybody's way. 
Mr. Jones. It is not possible to eat corn on the cob without front teeth. Or would you like to find that out for yourself? Sorrowful, don't let that big ape push you around. Well, I'll try to control my temper. Look, I'll go in there and put it to the little doll in person. Maybe she'd like to go. If you take that little girl out of here, it'll be over my dead body. That too can be arranged. <laughs> Meantime, sit down! Mr. Sorrowful, if he's not going to take my... To my daddy, where is he taking me? Well, I'm sorry, Short. You're going to a special place just for juniors. An orphanage. What's an orphanage? Oh, it's like a big pool room, but for kids. It's a pool... No. No, you're not going anyplace. Now, look, Shorts. We're going to play a game called hide-and-go-seek. Now, you climb out the window and hide on the fire escape. Just stay there, see? On the fire escape? What kind of a game is this? I learned it during my vaudeville days. It's called Actor and the Landlady. <laughs> Now, don't make a sound till I yell ready. Are you going to surprise me again? This time it's me I'm surprising. And no matter what happens, just keep quiet. I will, Mr. Sorrowful. Okay, honey. Now, out you go. Hey, what's the big idea of locking that bedroom door? I'm not going to let you take her, Sam. Make one move and I'll throw a punch. Why, you punk, I'll break your neck. You break my neck and I'll... You'll what? I'll nod all over you. <laughs> one punch and I can flatten you. All right, you'll flatten me, but I'll get up off the floor swinging. So you're swinging, so I bust your nose. So what? Nobody will ever notice the difference. You take it easy, Sam. You're outnumbered. Stay out of this, madam, or I'll pop you too. Now give me the key before I ram your head through that door. There. Well, I warned him. Now get shorts out of that room. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe it's a good thing I checked up in person. All right, Sam, get off the floor. Get rid of the kid? No. No, she's still in there, Steve. Now, wait a minute, Steve. She's not in there. Oh, no. There. You see? Empty room. But I see her go in there. Hey, kid! Kid! <laughs> All right, Sarapul. Where is he? Well, that's different. You ask a civil question, you get a civil answer. I don't know where she is. Hey, Paul! Paul, look! Down there! Down on the sidewalk, and that's all them people! Shorts. Shorts! Yeah, looks like our little problem's all taken care of, huh? She fell off the fire escape. Steve, call an ambulance. I'm going down there. Call him yourself. But be careful what you say, pal, or the next ambulance will be for you. For Defense Department employees working abroad, the laws and customs of a foreign land can be frustrating. Even though you're subject to foreign laws, you're also entitled to most of the safeguards outlined in the Status of Forces Agreements, and the local military commander will work to ensure that the rights of civilian personnel are properly maintained. It can be overwhelming, but the military is there to help you every step of the way. Now, your host, Frank Brzee, returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Sorrowful Jones, starring Bob Hope and Lucille Ball. It's several hours later, and Martha Jane lies in a hospital bed, critically injured. In the visitor's room, Sorrowful, Gladys, and Regret hear the latest word from the doctor. There's nothing new I can tell you, Mr. Jones. No change, I'm afraid. She's still delirious. Well, how bad is it, Doc? Her state of shock can be very serious. Uh, tell me, is her father here? No. Oh, then you must be the one she calls Dreamy Joe. Me? Dreamy Joe's a horse. He's her horse. A horse? Well, that's too bad. She keeps calling for Dreamy Joe. It would have helped if she could have seen him. I wonder if that praying commission is open in the daytime. What? Oh, Nothing. She keeps asking for Dreamy Joe. I never realized a nag could mean so much to a kid. Gee, just looking at him might make the difference. If the big race wasn't just a few hours off, we might arrange something. Well, which is more important, a bunch of horses chasing each other or Martha Jane? Well, what are you looking at me for? What do you want me to do, steal him off the track? If necessary, yes. 
Oh, fine. I'm sure no one will notice the lump under my coat. <laughs> you, uh... You know what they do to horse thieves? Well, they don't hang you anymore, Sorrowful. They just rough you up a bit. This is the craziest thing I ever heard of. I've crossed Big Steve once already. If I do it again, they'd have to roll me into surgery on four different tables. Sorrowful, what if we borrow Dreamy Joe after the race? There won't be any Dreamy Joe after the race. Speedballitis. Speedballitis? You mean you dragged the kid into a crooked race? You gave her a horse and let her go crazy about it when you knew it was going to die? Well, the kid just happened to get mixed up in it. I never wanted to hurt her. You get out of here. And just remember this. If we should ever run into each other again along Broadway, just keep walking. Come on, Regret. Let's get walking, blabbermouth. <laughs> Now you sorrowful, I just cased the stable. They're getting Dreamy Joe ready for the race. Once over Sam, he's taking the night for a walk. Sam, huh? Well, we'll just have to take the horse away from Sam. I might have known it, it'd be we again. If you were half a man, you'd think of shorts. If this plan of yours doesn't work, I'll be half a man. I'll get going. I'll be right in back of you. No slip-ups, or we'll both be wearing cement wedgies. <laughs> ah, good afternoon, Sam. What do you want? I don't want nothing. Then why are you telling me good afternoon for? <laughs> Taking uh, Dreamy Joe for a little stroll, huh? Yeah, want I should walk him a little? Shut up. Oh, look, Sam, I, I happen to like you. What is there to like? <laughs> well, I don't mean no offense. Why, everybody likes once over Sam. They do? Sure. Why, when you walk down Broadway, you know what everybody says? What? Uh, they say, uh, there goes Sam. No. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know what else they say? They say you're smart. You gotta be smart. If you don't like a guy, you gotta have brains enough to belt him on the chin. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so long, friend. Always nice to kick it around with you. Thank you kindly. And take my advice, regret. Give the rush to that crumb sorrowful. You got class. <laughs> Well, I'm back, boss. I take Dreamy Joe for a walk, like you say. Where is he? Where's Dreamy Joe? Boss, uh, he's right on the end of this rope. Oh, hey, hey, that, 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 that ain't Dreamy Joe. What happened? Boss, I bring back the wrong beast. What did you do with him? Where is he? I don't know. I am walking along, clutching the rope. Talking to my friend Regret. Regret? Why, you dunce? That means Sorrowful Jones has Dreamy Joe. He switched horses on you while you were talking to your friend. No. Come on, I think I know just where to find him. Well, I got you away from the track, Dreamy Joe. Now all we got to do is hitch a ride back to town. <laughs> why didn't you think of that before we left the stable? <laughs> I can't understand these drivers. Nobody wants to give us a ride. Hey, Dreamy, lift your blanket and show a little more leg. <laughs> well, never mind. I guess we'll have to do it the hard way. I'll just leap on your back like this. Whoa. Steady, boy. We'll try it again. Whoa, boy. Whoa, now. Can you kneel down a little? Look, how about this? I'll spread my legs and you crawl under me, huh? <laughs> hey, hey, take it easy. I'm going side saddle. Just follow the traffic, Dreamy Joe. We're heading straight into town. Well, this is the hospital, Dreamy Joe. Now all we got to do is sneak in that door and go down the corridor to the elevator. Just act nonchalant. If anybody stops us, just tell them you're visiting someone. Just a minute. What is the meaning of this? Oh, it's okay, nurse. He's my brother. Your, your brother? Yeah, I'm taking him to the psycho ward. He thinks he's a horse. <laughs> Quiet, Vaughn. Oh, get, get away from that elevator. Stop. Uh, Dr. Hortley, there's a lunatic in the elevator. This is it, Dreamy Joe, fifth floor. I'll see if the coast is clear. And if you see anyone, look sick. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Big Steve and Sam down there in front of Martha Jane's room. Steady, Dreamy Joe, stay here in the elevator, and I'll just sneak out, and I'll... Hey, Dreamy Joe, hey, come back here! Come here! 
Something wrong, young man? Yeah, the elevator, it's gone. Well, it's automatic. Someone must have buzzed for it. Yeah, but there's a horse in that elevator. A horse? Yeah, I told him I'd be right back. You told the horse you'd be right back? Yeah, now he's disappeared. The horse disappeared? I lost my horse, you see. All right, all right. Now, let's not get excited. I'm not excited. Take it easy. Maybe he just went down for a sandwich or something. <laughs> He'll come right back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we see them around here all the time. Oh, you Pink do. horses, green horses, yeah. blue horses. Wait a minute. Are you a patient here? I happen to be a doctor. Now, why don't you step into my office and we'll see if we... Stop looking at me as if I'm Olivia de Havilland. <laughs> <laughs> there, you see? That's my horse. Where'd you go, Dreamy? You have to go riding up and down. One more move like that and you wind up in a tube in a stationary store. We got work to do now. Come on. Nurse! Intern! Help! <laughs> Not so fast, Dreamy Joe. Quit shoving. Quit. Now, wait a minute. I don't know how we're going to get past those two gorillas. Why'd you have to get mixed up with Big Steve anyway? Don't you know he... Well, could... if it ain't Sheriff Joe and the horse. He's got the horse. Dreamy Joe, yeah. I was just bringing him in for a checkup. After all, he... Oh! What a sucker leading with your right. Get up off the floor. Give me that horse. I gotta have that horse. And that's for swiping the kid. That's enough, Sam. We gotta get out of here. Oh, no, you don't. Wait till I give Sam my rabbit punch. Oh! Can't understand it. Always works on rabbits. <laughs> Better buzz for that elevator, boss. You're not taking that horse. So you want more lumps, huh? I want Dreamy Joe. And this is for shooting your mouth off to the law. Meaning me, Sam? Rin. Grab him, boy. Oh, we got him, oh, it's a good thing you came, Reardon, or I'd have killed him. Let's go, Steve. <laughs> You too, Sam. I want to have a little chat with you boys down at headquarters. Yeah, and I got a date with Dreamy Joe. Come on, George. Come on, boy. I'll have you back pounding a beat for this. Maybe so. But there's a certain scrub lady who works in your cafe. She recognized a photograph of Orville Smith. Said he was in your place just before he was murdered. All right, boys. Take him away. Here he is, Doctor. Dreamy Joe. Well... You told me if Martha Jane saw Dreamy Joe, maybe I she... I don't know, Mr. Jones. We've done everything we can. She's no better? Well, if she was, you don't think I'd let you bring a horse in here, do you? All right, lead him in. Oh, sorrowful. You brought him. Yeah. Shorts. Shorts. Can you open your eyes? Look who's here. Martha Jane. Shorts. Look, honey, look. It's Dreamy Joe. He came to see you. <laughs> Joe. I couldn't keep him away, Shorts. He kept asking for you. Dreamy Joe. Dreamy Joe. Well, I've been practicing a good many years, but I've never seen anything like this before. You, you mean she'll get better now? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Yes, I think you can leave the rest to me now. Hey, Sorrowful, come out in the hall a minute. Well, I don't have to ask. I can read her chart on your faces. Oh, she's got to be all right, Mr. Reardon. Sorrowful brought her the best medicine in the world. Well, as soon as she's up and around, I'll take over. Wait. You mean that orphanage routine? I guarantee the best. And I'll scout around for some nice people to adopt her. Yeah? Hey, would you mind holding Dreamy Joe for a minute? Hey, Gladys, this way. What's the matter, Sorrowful? Well, you can't let shorts fall in the hands of some strange couple. They might be undesirable characters. It would still be an improvement for her. Look, you want to get married, don't you? You've hinted at it often enough. <laughs> Yes, one of these days, but to a solid citizen, and I don't see any around. Who cares about solid citizens? I'm thinking about shorts. If we don't act fast, she's going to be farmed out from under us. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, I'm willing to make a sacrifice. Why can't you? <laughs> Some couple has to adopt her. How about us? I think that's a very good idea. The first one of us who gets married should definitely adopt her. I mean to each other. Come here. Sorrowful Jones. Yeah. Mrs. Sorrowful Jones. Don't you have a real first name? Hmm? Don't you have a real first name? Mm hmm. What is it? Humphrey. <laughs> Humphrey. There's nothing romantic about that. Well, don't let it bother you. I got a middle name, too. What is it? Rossellini. <laughs> And so, a few weeks later, Sorrowful Jones and Gladys and Martha Jane 
Well, I'm sure glad we're going home. My feet are killing me. But the flea circus. Aren't we going to the flea circus? Short, you can't do it all in one day. We've been to the zoo. We climbed to the top of the Statue of Liberty. We were on the lake in Central Park. Just look at these blisters from Rowan. Show them, Gladys. Hold out your hands. <laughs> but you promised, Daddy. Well, Daddy. Okay. What a way to spend a honeymoon. <laughs> concludes this copyrighted edition of the Golden Days of Radio and our continuing salute to Bob Hope. A lot of people use air conditioning whether they need it or not. They seem to ignore the fact that a nice breeze is blowing or that the humidity is at a comfortable level. A lot of people turn their heat up higher than necessary. They seem to think the higher the temperature, the more comfortable they'll be. Not true. Using the air conditioner when it really isn't needed is a waste of energy. So is using more heat than you need. And when you stop to consider that the government pays for that energy with your tax dollars, it's a waste of your money. So use air conditioning and heating wisely. Enjoy it when you really need it. And turn it off or turn it down when you don't. This is Frank Brzee inviting you to join me next week for more shows and personalities from radio's Golden Days. Golden Days.